Whoa, yeah. I like I like giving a little yeah in the beginning. And then I realized that you listen to this every week. So I hope you like the yeah, the karate. These are the paying sponsors for the show. If you'd like to be a paying sponsor for the show, you can email me at neveragainstudio at gmail.com. I have information I can send over to you. But these are all my friends, family, your family when you're involved here. Very fast and furious. But uh, you can contact me and you can become a part of the show. And they keep the lights on. So I appreciate all of the sponsors that mess with the show. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Contact me if you'd like to be a sponsor. Finishers MMA, finishersmma.com, at finishers. That's how you find them on social media. These guys have a show with us every Monday called Now We Go. You can check it out. Zach, JM, Thor, Grace, there's too many to name that come out of that school, and they are killers in the game. They are the biggest MMA jiu-jitsu school in the area, and they are owning the East Coast. You can contact them at 610-438-0746. Ask for Andrew. They are at 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA. They have two locations as of now, Bethlehem and Allentown. They are growing into three, four, five, six. They, I would say they are taking over, but they already have. Check them out on all of their social media. They are awesome to follow. And if you're looking to get in shape, you're looking to choke people, you're looking to do anything at all to better your life, finishersmma.com. Ball, ValleyRooter.net. That's not how you pronounce it all the time. I just say it that way. All Valley Rooter, Jared LaBarba. He is my plumber. He's the show's plumber. I'm getting him plumbing business all over, and I love that he is getting what he wants. He has 24-hour emergency service. He is certified, insured, and professional. You can follow him at All Valley Rooter. He's on social media, and you can find his information at AllValleyRooter.net. Jared came down over the weekend and he fixed a problem down here. He's super professional. I love him as a person. I love his business. He grew it and uh, he's doing his own thing. Um, it's allvalleyrooter.net. It's 24-hour professional plumbing services. He can help you out with everything you need. It's 610-762-1656. He's certified, insured, and professional. Do not be afraid to contact him for any of your plumbing needs. Support Jared. Jared supports us. Luke Delmeyer Handmade Custom Knives. Uh... I love Luke. It's LukeDelmeyer.com. He's a farrier, a bladesmith, and a blacksmith. He has custom knives, and the best part about it is you can take classes to make them. So not only can you take a class to learn how to make knives, at the end of the class, you get that knife. We're working on a project together. He started uh, recently getting into chef knives, so he started to make chef knives. He makes hunting knives. He can make any of your needs as far as blacksmithing. That's at Luke Delmeyer on Instagram. That is the best way to follow him. You can see all the stuff that he's posting posting, he shares, he does raffles, he gives giveaways. Check out all things Luke Delmeyer at LukeDelmeyer.com. We've had him on the show before. You can dig down in the library, listen to how he got started and where he's at now. I'm excited to work with Luke. Uh, he's a really good friend of the show, and I'm excited to showcase his chef knife that he's making me. Check out all things Luke Delmeyer at LukeDelmeyer.com. Farrier, bladesmith, blacksmith. Rips Auto Detail. This guy is the best, hands down, in the area. I've interviewed him. I know his story. He's doing things that others aren't, and I'm, I love that he fucks with the show. I love getting the best of the best and having them support and be a part of this. That's what the sponsorship is for. I'm giving you the best people in their profession, and Rips is the best at Auto Detail. It's at Rips Auto Detail for Instagram. You follow that. He's showing you the different cars he does, and it's at 6.30. North Nelson Street in Allentown, PA. He offers paint correction, ceramic, SPS coatings, and more. This is appointment only, and it's ripsautodetail at gmail.com. You can call him at 484-553-1366. I tell you, follow him. If you you, you don't know, you want to know more about what he does, follow him on Instagram. Follow Rips Auto Detail, and you can see all the things that Rip does. He's a big part of the show. We have a, a separate show we do called Road Dogs, and you can check out his past interviews and hear his whole story. Uh, I couldn't recommend this guy more for your auto, car, boat, plane. This guy literally has done everything and he is the best in the area doing this. Rips Auto Detail. Influencer, TikToker, entrepreneur, 
OnlyFans are, at this point I'm just adding ERs, Show Stalker, Gypsy Sister Kelly Lynn. She's sponsoring the show. And all you little boys who hit me up in my DMs, look at that, man. She's in a bikini. Go. Go. Go pay for it. Go pay for it. Go over to her Instagram. You want to know what Kelly's doing? Guys and girls. Because girls, you can learn what she's doing. She's making a lot of money. You go over to at the Gypsy Sister. You click on the link in her bio. After you look at all her pictures. A lot of good content. She's putting out content. She's an influencer. She's crushing TikTok. So you get into that, that Instagram. And then you, you click on it. And then you got your links. You got all your links now. You can see everything she's doing. Everything. She's doing merch. Go pick up a shirt or a pillow. You want to sleep next to her? That's what I do. I got six of them in my bed. TikToker. You want to see her dance a little bit? See her dance on the railroad? Go there. She's an entrepreneur, an influencer, a TikToker. We're doing a podcast together. She's got a web page coming. Should have asked me to do it. It'd be done. And she's a counselor. Girls, you want to learn how to do what she's doing? Go check it out. All information is at at Gypsy Sister on Instagram. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you for finally taking the step towards OnlyFans. And you can go check it out, guys. Get out of my DMs and get into hers. Thank you, Kelly. Give up. I am not defeated, and I shall hold my ground. Ooh, hold your ground. You can barely hold your sword. Then come get me. I love, I love the game still, man. I'm not changing it. I'm not trying to revamp it. I'm not trying to... I, I want it to be as real as this room that we're in. Man of my word. Many times people have said what I can't do, what I'm not going to do. But you don't have the power to prove that to no one, do you? The JM and Zach, they, they, they work together so well. It's almost like they're, like they're twins. Yo, what up? Buenos dias. What's going on? We're here, Trainer Don't Podcast, episode number two, our very first guest. Well, technically, Mike, you were our very first guest, <laughs> but uh, our very first guest that doesn't, you know, run this place, uh, Drew Puzon, man, the black belt, jiu-jitsu black belt. He's a, a man of many talents, and, you know, I've met him, we've been training for a while, and uh, I wanted to get him on, so uh, everyone welcome Drew Puzon. Hola. Cool. Hi, good morning. Welcome, man. Uh, thanks for doing this. You know, it's Saturday morning. It's early. Uh, what's up, man? Chilling in the blue basement. The other blue basement. Yeah, not a bad setup, right? It's the first time seeing the studio and stuff. We've been doing podcasts in here for a while. I have never done a podcast. First ever podcast. Yes, and I don't like talking. <laughs> you right. said that when you came down here. But hello Yeah. anyone listening. I have to talk for you. This is for you. I don't do anything for me. It's all for you. <laughs> all right word yeah so you run a you run a jiu-jitsu school right you run you're you're doing you're all in the, all kinds of sorts of shit i'm sure that i don't even know about so i mean this is just for something to i mean you run puzan jiu-jitsu where's that located at it's in milltown new jersey milltown new jersey yes we're just waiting for governor murphy and the magic virus to leave and then all will be good again <laughs> How is that? I know you guys are like. How's you know, the magic virus? Well, no, not the virus. Like your your school. Like I know you like kind of. New Jersey's worse than Pennsylvania. I just got a pro wrestler who joined the other day. He's pretty hype. I saw that from Jap Japan. Yeah, it's a. Is he J Japanese or he looked like a white a white guy? He is definitely a white guy. But he's in Japan professional wrestling. Well, now COVID is killing everybody. Competitions. Yeah, a lot of people are hurting. People can't compete, so he's from Staten Island. He said everything's pretty much closed in Staten Island. Like even people who've been there for a long time are closed. So Jersey's like way worse. Jer I think like Jersey's like worse than Pennsylvania, isn't it? Like have, as far as like the lockdown, they're like str strict on the lockdown. curtains on the window cure all. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we did too. We put a like the we just put brown paper on the windows and just kept doing what we're doing. Karens be everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I went and got a haircut yesterday at this, you know, salon. I go to a. Do you go to a barber or do you go to a, a salon? I drive fifty minutes and pay ten dollars in tolls to get a haircut. So you go into the city? No, Cherry Hill. Okay, William Roberts Salon. Okay, so 
There you go, right? Uh-huh. He goes to a salon. I also go to a salon. I didn't know that about you, but now I respect you more. I've never gone to a bar. Oh, I have gone to a barber, but when I got my hair cut, it was always at a salon. You know what it is? You know why? It's because we have different hair. Like if you have like like black guy hair, like you have thicker curly hair, you go to a barber, you know, because that's where. I think barbershops also just started becoming uh, like hip and popular to go to. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. I'm going to sell got, I, well, back, As a kid, you know? I was never taken. I think mean, my dad took me to a barber once, but uh, I was never taken. My mom always took me to a salon because that's where she would get her If you're hair Italian, cut. you know, you can get the. Yeah. But like, I, I like a pretty lady to cut my hair. Yes. That smells what I good. Prefer. I don't like some, some dude cutting my I hair. I have a dude. Oh, well, that's fine. I got to watch my elbow sometimes because on the chair, you know, sometimes your elbows hit stuff and they get too close. Yeah, his dick touches. Well, yeah, yeah with him, it's yeah, like, yeah, dude, gotta, come on, man. I don't want this, you know. I get two free glasses of alcohol at my salon. I don't know about your salon. I get wine. Yeah, I didn't I know, know they did that until yeah. uh, the one day but, I got a, they were like, would you like a, a wine or a Corona? And I was like, I yeah, love a Corona. I would love one. <laughs> Speaking of Corona, now they don't give free drinks anymore. How about your place? Since Corona, no, no, they- it, dude. They, yeah, I just went yesterday and it was a <sighs> shit show. I was red pilling my my stylist. I was red pilling her. She's like, I voted for Biden, and I'm like, No, oh. you didn't. I haven't seen her in a year. That was the last time I seen her. Shout out to Jack, uh, Jacqueline Scott Hair. She's married and shit, but she cuts my hair. She does a good job. Shout out her to her for voting for Biden. No, for oh. cutting my hair. <laughs> she, you know, she's like. I don't know, dude. I just—I was just telling her about all the stuff and just trying to tell her like, there's so much disinformation on both sides. There's, so, it's like a war for your mind, you know, every day. Training. Let's talk about training. Oh shit! It is a trainer don't podcast. <clears throat> well, yeah. Well, that's why training's important. We can, uh, yeah. Training is important because you don't think about this beach bullshit. But but yeah. So actually, I met you, and then I didn't. Uh, I didn't know I met you until I met you again. And I was, you're like, yeah, I did the finishers tournament. So you were in uh, the finishers absolute tournament, right? Our first absolute. Yes. Which is pretty funny because I met you. I showed you the pass. You like the pass a lot. A week later, I get a Facebook memory where I'm doing that same exact pass and you're the referee in the background. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's some wild shit. And I was like, damn, like I, not only did you know, I'm so, I saw, I'm like, I know you. Like when you walked in the. Um, fight and heal. I'm like, I know you. And then, like, then you showed that pass. I still do that pass. Um, crazy. Yeah, you you helped uh tremendously from my last camp with this combat jujitsu match. I, like, I didn't get my guard passed at all. Uh, I roll with this guy, Mike. Can you believe that? Um, he's a big dude. He's a big dude. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a big. He's, he's, he's hard. Uh, big fat heavy. Sorry, dude. I was up here adjusting the camera. Uh, when the the bigger boys. The the yeah. stocky thick ones they're hard to get on camera and I'm like dude that can't get a good angle this dude's fucking big that's a thick ass <laughs> boy dude and my yoga makes me heavier yeah that's how he so met so I feel bad for people laying on them because I'd rather lay on people and isolate them and not let them move and give them their next move but I like laying on them and I feel bad sometimes. Yeah, you, you but smash. But not really, not really. You but smash. Sometimes I apologize. It, you do a great job, man. Uh, I gave me a lot of confidence. Gave me a lot of. I'm like, damn, like I'm rolling with Drew. You know that that what I mean. What you're doing at Fighting Hill with uh, Arsini is is dope. Like you guys got like a really cool vibe going on. I don't know if you want to talk about that or like what your plans are. We can talk about whatever, but real quick, just because we're talking about pressure and stuff. Oh, all you ankle lockers who like ankle locking and sitting on your butt and butt scooting. I've been focusing so much lately on just passing your butterfly guards and killing you. So, yeah, yeah I come believe try to, it. You cannot elevate my hips. My hips are mine. They're not yours to be elevated. I'm going to pass your guard, smash you, throw some hip bones in your ribs, shit like that. Come check it out. I'll give you some ribs. Mil- Milltown, New Jersey. Yeah, drop kick. Or fight and heal. On Thursdays. Yeah. Sometimes Saturdays. Well, you got to be invited to the Thursdays. It's pretty special. My bad. Yeah. I'm well, invited to the Thursdays. Some people are not ready for Thursdays. That's intense, man. You know, it might be, you might have to, you don't know if it's going to be like the hardest workout you've ever done or like the drunkest you've ever been. It might <laughs> be one. <laughs> for me, you know, not for like a brand new student. I, I have a permanent indent in my shin from a Thursday. 
what happened. Yeah, you guys. This uh, was well. Fist fight. This was like five hours after it started, and everybody left, and it was just Arsini and I. And shit gets crazy. I would like to say this about Arsini and Fight to Heal. He has lately changed my game. Mm-hmm. Like even I was rolling with Nikki Rod the other day. Like, what is that called? The first day of the year, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Anyway, but, but rolling with Arsini. Like jujitsu is a cool sport, but unfortunately it can make me lazy because you can't pass my guard, blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. I just could lay there and be lazy. But rolling with Arsini, he invites headlocks and elbows and shoulders. So yeah, jujitsu is a cool sport. MMA is a cool sport. It's a sport, but fighting is like another thing for real. Right, right, right. And Arsini like wakens you up to that for yeah. sure. So now I'm like always, I mean, it's helped me in the past like month because he started headbutting me and yeah. you know, whatever. You don't want to get headbutted. <laughs> like a collar tie is cool, but you get a collar tie and then a headbutt, you're not expecting it. So yeah. he awakens me to so much. And then the next week you come back and you're going to defend it. But then he has another thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so pushing the head away has been a good thing. Like even sitting on the ground, whatever, like making them look away. If they can't see you, they can't attack you. Mm-hmm. So I've been using that a lot to in my game and it's, you know, whatever. It's yeah, something I, cool to do. I roll with you, it's like rolling with a freight train. Turn their eyes away my, from you. My best bet is to just try to survive as long as possible. You know, like if you pass or some shit, it's awful. I try to be nice, but that's why I like competing sometimes because you don't have to be nice. Right. But I don't like competing because whatever. I'm old. There's no liquor in this, is there? No. Okay. Regular coffee. And Why is, regular it, is coffee. it strong? I made it strong. Is it too? Maybe strong? it's just the beer in my uh, <laughs> mouth, and then the coffee that made. I maybe think. That and it's a coffee gonna... beer. Regular and it's regular. a coffee beer. Yeah, I have yeah. regular coffee right here, and then I also have a regular <laughs> coffee <laughs> right here. Let's, this let's, is try, let's try and pull that beer company for a sponsor. Dude, yeah, dude. they're from Jersey. Kane. Yeah, Arsony. Uh, what a cool guy. You know what's crazy oh, though? It's not Kane. It's sorry. It's, it's uh most people would say his shit's like not legit, you know, like, oh, that shit's fake, like the Sistema approach, you know, or or just anything that he does is like kind of like shunned out as like not, because it's like it's not a sport, it's not accepted as, as like the meta of MMA, you know what I mean? Like 90% of people think that this is the way to do it, you know? Um, but like that's why I kind of like 10th Planet stuff too, because like everyone back in the day kind of, maybe like 10 years ago, not so much now. Well, people were like, rubber guard doesn't work and all this shit doesn't work. Like, it works for me. Helps me roll with everybody all the time. So I always, I, I enjoy like unorthodox shit. I don't want to be like everyone else. You know, like I know like everyone wants to be like build the race car like everyone else built the race car. But I want to build, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I want to. So like training with you guys, it's such a cool like. For, like the the style that you and Arsene kind of vibe off each other, like you you have like the smashing style, like a like more, but you're like chill though, like you know what I mean, like, but your jujitsu is top notch, and then you got a guy Arsene who I mean, uh, he's like, like he's doing like all kinds of weird like body movement shit and like uh, body awareness and like relaxing in bad positions and shit. I mean like shit that most people would be like that shit's fucking stupid, but like. It's almost like you have to be at a level of understanding, like beyond a beginner or like even like someone that like thinks they know what they're talking about. You have to have like an expert understanding to kind of get the value of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I am getting old and I'm old and I've been in pain since I've been even before I started jujitsu. Oh, You're all right. <laughs> um, but I've been in pain for so long and like, yeah, he's just awake. He is, I was with Hippie Steve. I don't know if you ever met Hippie Steve. I but, met Hippie yeah. Steve. Yeah, he's a uh, mountain biker. We were. We were driving together and we were talking about Arsini and just don't think he's human. Like you watch him walk on someone's back with a stick. He looks like a little gnome, moves his feet. I mean, he's just, he's amazing. But anyway, I have been, even at my school, like I've been massaging everybody ever since that seminar, like trying to practice, practice, like tapping somebody out. That's why I just like laying on people because if I tap you out, there's like no fun and we have to start over again. I'd rather just lay on you the whole time. And smash you but, yeah uh, with him so i get no joy out of really tapping anybody out but healing people it's uh, cool it's, right it's way better it's a way better feeling it's something that lasts longer like a tap like tap start over again i could tap you out so many times if i wanted to 
but to like really focus and take the time to yeah. heal somebody and and I've also like realized with him even massaging someone else it relaxes you he's like you can't touch somebody if you're tense because that tense just fucking carries over right but anyway we could drop kick people and smash them and choke them out yeah, that's what yeah. we were talking about we do that <laughs> we've been doing that for years you know what I mean so that's what's so cool like you go on a Thursday and it's like kind of like a, we're train we train hard you know, I, I'm get, I get in better shape going there. I don't get in worse shape going. There. I get in better shape going there, like, cause like, like you said, like most people like that train you. They're like, you gotta pick this up and put it down. You gotta be explosive. You gotta fucking run the sprints and spar hard. You know, we've done that for so many years. You know what I mean? And then you have a guy that's like, no, you just relax. Like, let's stretch mm. you out and like get some more mobility. And like, you're so tight. Like, let's work on this. You know, like, um, man, those Thursdays. I don't know where they came from. Where they came out of, I don't know why we started training on Thursdays, but though that's like the one because I got the kid, you know, I got the baby, and uh, you know, I got the school, so that that Thursday is like my my one day a week where I'm like, this is fucking it's my day. It's super cool too because it's <clears throat> you know if I go to jujitsu school, jujitsu school, jujitsu school, jujitsu school, we're just doing jujitsu, 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 you know. But you know, you're a tenth planet guy. You're definitely way different than me. So we have completely different styles and then we add him into the mix it's a lot of different yeah training it's not the same like i said i could do jujitsu and fall asleep and roll eight hours like while i'm sleeping anyway but uh you know you started jujitsu when you were 28 i know that yeah 27 or 28 i had my first fight i used to work for echo unlimited and i was talking to one of my friends there and i was like i'd like to try that ufc shit one day and he's like oh yeah casey ruby it all started because of him two weeks later he's like yo i gotta fight for you now, i was not training at all or nothing it was just like i'd like to try that someday <laughs> so he made up this amazing what bed. year is this it's like 2000 2001 no shit yeah it was for mass destruction okay so yeah massachusetts uh-huh my so he got me a fight first guy it was supposed to be it was his first fight my first fight but that guy backed out and by the time the fight came I was fighting, I was the main event. I was fighting a guy 8 and no. Oh my God. And again, all I did was. like that happens all the time, dude. All I, yeah. did, all I did was jog. <laughs> like, I was like, oh. You yeah. didn't even know jiu jitsu at this point? No. I know that. You know how to a, punch? I'll tell you what I know during, like, during the fight. I'll tell you, like, what I knew about jiu jitsu. Yeah, I know how to punch. Like, I was in the Marines, so I fought like three times a week. I have knuckles from the Marines. Anyway, just fought a lot in the Marines. So I know how to fight. So the fight came. Anyway, they canceled a couple of fights. Anyway, fight comes and I start blasting him in the face. And then I stopped. And then I was like, holy shit, I'm in the fucking ring fighting. Like, I thought about it after. And then I was like, this guy told me something to do two weeks before the fight. And it's something I would never do and I would never do again. But for some reason, it just popped in my fucking head. Mm -hmm. He's like, just pick your foot up like this. And kick, you know, like, like you're going to kick him in the balls. And then he's going to block it and then punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy was, the guy was a wrestler. So this was, yeah. I was like, bah, 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 bah. and then I stopped. I was like, Oh my God. So I, for some reason, it, just, it was the first thing to pop in my head. So I did that. And he was a wrestler. He just grabbed my leg. He took me down. Yeah. And then I was like, that guy, oh, he's crazy. He wraps his legs around people. I was like, let me wrap my legs around him. Like, I didn't know what it was even called the guard, but I was just like, let me let my legs on him. And then I just held his head in Phoenix. I am. Anyway, he got up. Anyway, that was my first fight. Yeah. Anyway, it was fun. In 2000, was, 2001. Yeah. It was, like, it was like a boxing match. That's where Zach, like, that's when Zach started fighting, like, back then. Like, I know Mass, mass Destruction, and there was reality fighting, right? Mm hmm. Like, Naga run both those. I like fighting, but, like, I've done it. I've had, like, seven fights, and I've only trained for, like, two of them. <laughs> and the rest have been on like week notice and all against guys who were like in the UFC. Like they were all really good guys. Nobody was, everybody had a really good record. Yeah. But I would just walk in and like, I didn't train much because I'm always injured. Like I have neck problems and whatever. I, like I said, I have problems before. But I would just walk in one day and they're like, hey, somebody back up a fight you want to do? It? I was like, I just don't like saying no. I feel bad saying no. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, and that's why I, that's why he's here right now. Yeah. Because I asked him, he's like, ah, I feel bad saying okay. no. No, but. Uh, <laughs> Best way to get gas. I knew that. I'm like, oh, he feels bad saying no. Yes. Um, yeah, man. Uh, fighting kind of sucks. 
I mean, if it's for you, it's for you, but. Well, here's the, yeah, it does suck. I, I understand what you're saying. Like when I was in the Marines, I love fighting. Like a real fight. If you want, if I want to fight somebody, it's like amazing. yeah, you're good at it. Like, yeah. I can't find anybody now who like wants to fight because you can. And now I could just beat somebody up with my eyeballs. You know, you just look at them and they don't want to fight. But anyway, yeah. Um, but fighting like in a cage, like if you ever watched me fight in a cage, like I'm laughing before. I just feel stupid being in there. It's like to me, it's yeah, it's like whatever. the whole. It's like if I'm, it's like. It's a sport. It's fun. I love training for MMA, but like having an actual fight, it's, you know, mm -hmm. unless I really have something against you, yeah, it's I don't not. really want to fucking fight you. But if it's in the street, I'm going to fucking kill you. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel that a lot. Um, I know like at your fight to win uh, match, I watched you did like a black belt super fight at that uh, last fight to win in Philly. And uh, when the whole city was shut down and shit, don't go, <clears throat> don't go to Philadelphia. Patriots assemble. Um, Magic virus. Yeah, the virus. Magic. Um, so you did that super fight down there. And I remember you like upstairs. You kind of had you had your girl with you. And you were just, you had, you know, you had your gi on. You were walking around. You were like, I'm going to hit him with this move. Like I would just <laughs> come up and say hi to you trying to talk to you. And then you were like, I'm going to hit him with this. And I'm going to hit him with that. And, uh, you know. Uh, and then that's exactly what you did. Except Crushed. I, I didn't land it in Mount. If I would have landed in Mount, I would have did it. But I landed Top in half. three quarter. Yeah, whatever. Pretty close. Uh, I went to Arsenis that and morning. And I got to coach. And I got to coach you for that. So I was like ringside. That was for exciting. That. that was cool. I went to Arsenis that morning, and he stretched me out a little bit. It felt amazing. Yeah. Other things were involved, but I guess we won't talk about it. Sweet. Bruh. That's suggestive. Uh -huh. so it was a great. It was a great day. Yeah, man. Um, when when did we start training? How long has it been since we've been training like together at, at Fight and Heal? Maybe like a year. No, I'm gonna say it. It could be four months. The pandemic kind of made that happen, huh? I'm gonna. Kind of say four months at the most. Like, wow. but like, <laughs> like even my girls, like, are you going to Arsenies on Thursday? Like, she, I don't know. She's like, go to Arsenies on Thursday, you know. Uh, so that's cool. Is know? Arsene the guy who has the uh, crazy yes. wooden thing that I always see? Yeah, in, and he, all that. Yeah, he. I mean, you see how he's injured. All he talks about how he's hurt and shit like that. So, so, so. that that guy uh, is. What you said, healing is that like thing used to like stretch you out, and he's for like I, people ask me what it does, and I don't have a definition. Um, I will say, sometimes you roll up to his place, and you get out of your car, and you hear people screaming, like in his garage where he does it. Like I've heard screams. I would equate him to, like going to visit him, like if you're doing a one on one, is like getting a tattoo and a root canal at the same time oh my god yeah it's, and yeah i will tell him to his face he's a, like a scumbag you're an asshole like you don't care about anybody but, <laughs> <laughs> no how i feel no <laughs> when he's working on you he don't care about your feelings like yeah no he, don't well, care about he your keeps feelings. it real right yeah well Just, you're at where you're at but like if someone asked me the benefits of it, it's like when you're done, like you just feel like you own that space in front of you. Like mm -hmm. I'll fucking you know kill anybody in front of me. But at the same time, you'd give them a flower because you don't want to. But if they wanted to, like I'll fucking destroy you. It's good times. Yeah, like he, the word heal is like a real. That's a real word. That's a real word. For that's sure. like a that's like a deep. That's some deep shit. I mean, like he'll put you on that private low and he won't even. You know, sometimes he works you out on it. You know, you do like the workout kind of thing. And, you know, one, I mean, someday he just has me hang for like six minutes and I'm just trying to like not think about how much it sucks. Like, you know what I mean? And like, you feel like the more you relax, the more you're getting stretched and the more you're, you're trying not to freak out, you know? Mm. And then you get off and your body's like adjusting to just being stretched the fuck out. And dude, I'll just fucking ball up and start crying. Like, I won't like cry like a bitch, mm -hmm. but I'll be like, I'll be getting emotional because like all that shit's like all that tension is just getting released. All that tension you carry, like someone says something you weird on a Monday and mm -hmm. this guy says, you know, you know, you got students that just <clears throat> treat you like shit. You know what I mean? For no reason. Like I don't make people call me <laughs> master sensei. You know what I mean? So, you know, or whatever, whatever is going on in your life. My students call me daddy. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I should start doing that. You know? Yeah. When I go there, like sometimes when I bring people like. They're like, what are we going to do today? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I have zero expectations on a Thursday. You just never know what we're going to do. And that's what's cool. You're like, when you go to, like I said, when you go to jujitsu or you're going to Muay Thai, or you're going to whatever, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. When you go to Arsini, it's just like, we're just going to roll with it, you know? And it seems like when everybody gets there, everybody has the same 
everybody's feeling the same every day. It's like, oh, we're kind of lazy today. Let's stretch. Let's do gets, this yeah. or whatever. It just seems like we just get there and we just go off the vibe and we take yeah. it from there. Yeah. And then my, I come back to my class on Thursday. I have a class at five o'clock on a Thursday. I go teach and everyone's like, I love Thursdays. <laughs> Everyone like, I love your Thursday class. Yeah, like, I run Thursdays pretty good too. I'm yeah. Like, we're for some reason a little more intense on Thursdays in my classes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I you know what? It's almost like I teach a little bit of what arsenic because I never, I always forget. That pisses me off. Like I'll go in on Thursday and I'll be hanging out with you guys, and arsenic will show me like like the stick thing. You know, he'll be mm. showing me that stick work where he's like fighting. You're fighting the stick, and then he'll show me a pass. So I'll be like trying to kind of almost do like a little bit of both of you guys like on my Thursday class. You know, where like you know what I'm saying because like there's, I have so many guys teaching classes at my school like, like um. I just want to give them something different. You know what I mean? There's so many guys trying to do what I'm doing that like, I just, I don't want to be like everyone else. I want to, I want you to take my class and be like, Oh, JM's on to some, some different shit. Mm. So, you know, you got to work to actively seek that out. So like, like mm. who's coming to Thursday afternoon at Arsenies? 10 of us at the most. And most of those guys, you know what I mean? It's just, it's cool, man. No one else is doing that shit. No one else. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a cool place. Yeah. You Enough know? about you, Arsini, if you're listening. We don't like you. You're a mean person. Shout out. Brr. Shout out. We'll have him on too, you know? <laughs> are you, you know, are you guys, uh, are you, like, I don't know, what else, what else do you want to tell? Are you up to anything with him? Like, are you guys going to do stuff together in the future? Like, are you guys? Well, I think just like anybody else, it's kind of hard to figure out what we're doing in life. But Corona, or no, sorry, the magic virus. Why do you call it the magic virus? Because I don't want to call it anything else but the magic virus because it makes magical things happen all around the world. Yeah. It's pretty wild Magic shit. is happening. Have you traveled at all? I can't. I got pizza yesterday somewhere. I worked all day and I had to go potty so bad. And they're like, no, you can't use your bathroom. The magic virus. And I'm like. <laughs> yeah, there's I just, rules. That I just think make. about how much I hate the politicians. Yeah. It's a fucking game. Anyway, do you think like, Do you think that Trump is going to overthrow the government on, on Inauguration Day? I don't even know what's going on because I don't watch TV because... I, I don't, don't watch TV I don't, either. I get my news off of Facebook and it's like only when I'm pooping. Oh, you can't get your news off Facebook, man. Facebook pooping news. <laughs> You're so disappointed. You can't get your news off Facebook. <laughs> what do You're I watch? Just, I don't you gotta, know what to watch. You gotta, I got you time gotta, to watch nothing. I'm, I'm going to send you some links. I want to listen to music, music and be happy and sing songs. Yeah, that's good though. That's good. You know? I know, like I know, like like let's say I was at the the salon the other day, right? I was uh, with Jacqueline, right? And she was telling me, you know, she knows the official story. Even if you don't watch the news, like let's say you tune it all out and you don't watch the news and you just hear it from other people, you're hearing the official story because they're hearing the official story. They're telling you the official story, and then you know what I'm saying, like. Uh, so you have to like, you have to pay attention. My. Other, the thing I'm sad about the most about the magic virus and all this BS that started whenever. It's like I've worked with people, an artist, one in particular. I feel like I'm losing friends that I haven't seen in a while over Facebook. Like if we were hanging out in real yeah. life, there would never be an issue Absolutely. ever in my fucking life. I love you to death. You're my fucking brother. But I haven't seen you in fucking four years and... Yeah. You know, you're locked in this city. I'm not locked, you know, I'm not locked in the city. I'm not doing shit. You know, there's two different worlds we're living in right now. And some people just ain't got nothing to do but watch fucking TV. And it's just ruining their lives and ruining our relationship. And uh, that's what I feel most bad about is like losing some friends where we shouldn't be losing friends. We're losing friends over interweb. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my story. No, back. dude, I, I talk about that all the time. Like, there's the people that, um, you know, they see what you put on the internet because who I am on the internet is who I am on the internet. I might share a meme that might piss a lot of people off, but I'm being a fucking asshole because it's the internet, you know, and then you will actually fuck up relationships over that shit, you know? No, people watching news and believe in bullshit. It sucks. Yeah. If you really believe that was just a, I saw, I only saw 30 seconds. I don't even want to get into politics. Talk Dude, about it's training. fine. It's fine. Let's talk about drop kicking. Drop it's fine. Kick. Training, I mean, but this is, training is important, uh, and, but this is what I'm saying, like, with politics and shit, people get political, but it's also being in touch with reality, which is why, you know, training is good, you know what I mean? Because you're, you know, 
you're you're not you're not faking it like oh like when you say like oh I can beat guys up like you know that because every day I'm beating mm -hmm. people up. It's not a, it's not a that's that's reality Plus, in my real life. Anybody who's training is getting out of the house and isn't scared. There's a lot of people who are scared right now, and I feel like those are the ones kind of losing. You have to unscare them. Zach yeah. talks about uh, unscaring people. You know, he does a he's running the kids class and he's running a million miles an hour. I just get out of his way. You know, nowadays, you know, because he'll just do better than me, like <clears throat> trying to do what he's doing too. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, let him do what he wants, and then I'll see what I can do around that. You know, I've been getting some like news, a couple like recently, last couple of weeks, like some more students are coming in. Dude, you should I have know. you should have a packed packed. I mean, New Jersey's super dense. I know, like Jersey is like super, like there's a lot of jiu-jitsu schools in New Jersey. You know. But you, I think, like, you could have, like, I'd love to train at your school. Like, I know you have, does Max still, is Max still training with you and stuff? He comes once in a while. That's what's up. But uh, it's pretty much just a bunch of blue belts. I have one purple belt, but he came as a blue belt. But uh, for as far as a bunch of blue and white belts, I think. Well, we you're some, one. You, we have some pretty tough dudes. My like, one blue belt fought your one blue belt. Fucking, my blue belts will drop kick your blue belts. Hey. But, uh, not your blue belts. Everybody else. Hey. Not you. Hey! I'll drop kick. I'll drop kick you while you're sitting you're on your butt. You're talking about my blue belts, man. Drop kick you while you're on your butt. That's my that's my life's work, my blue belts. <laughs> you, you cannot have my ankle. Yeah. No, nah, man. Hey. My ankle is um, not. I don't know. What what's what's going on in jujitsu? I know you train with Sean uh, Brady. That's cool. <sighs> He's in the UFC. He's a beast, right? Sean Brady is the most powerful guy. Do you know who Sean Brady is, Mike? No, ever in the he's world. In, he's like a, he's like choking guys out in the UFC. He's got his back is like the size of that table. Well, you know, here's here's my dream match that I want to see, even though it's a completely different weight. I want to see, as far as people I've trained with, I want to see Nicky Rod and Sean Brady. I just want to watch them spar together. Like just grappling though. Yeah, just even a fucking just like roll, Sean just Brady would feed Nicky Rod just, his face probably. Just rolling. Yeah. I want to watch him roll. Yeah, I trained with Nicky Rod on what, it's like New Year's Eve, and he's just a fucking beast. I like Nicky Rod. I like all those guys, man. <laughs> they make jujitsu jujitsu. I just hate like the cult following of everybody. Nicky Rod. Everyone has this cult following. Nicky I don't even know. I don't follow anyone. Like, I follow people. Like I like you said, like the Facebook shit. I follow people I train with in real life, and then I don't have a problem. When I start kind of like going out beyond that, that's when I start. I'm like this is gay. Like yeah, I only follow people training with, and like during this Corona. Oh, brr. anyway, um, we could close down. So I went to San Antonio, and you know, people only know people from what they know on the internet. Like some people, exactly. Some people think exactly. some people think this person's a saint because all he talks about is God and blah blah blah. But some people know that you're a fucking douchebag, yeah, you're a cokehead, or whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah. you fucking. It's it's Whatever. pretty fucking weird that that's how people are now. Like I was talking to somebody the other day about that, where it's like you when you meet somebody and you don't know them in real life and you just go off of social media and you don't have uh, a self-awareness of a disconnect of like, hey, this might not be who they are. And then you meet them and I'm like, oh, like you're a totally <laughs> fucking different person. Than what you are, like what you said, you're like I, you're a cokehead. You're, you know, like, I wish wait, you could put that on a t-shirt. I really seven, wish you're seven you two inches just shorter. Said, yeah, yeah. I you, wish, yeah, exactly, dude. I wish you guys what you just both just said could you could have that on just like a t-shirt that I. Yeah, could. it's very bizarre. Um, and what what I find is like most of the time it's like people who are doing like the women crush Wednesdays and the super religious shit, and then I'm like, <laughs> you find out all this fucking shit's going on, and I'm just like, what the fuck, dude, like. What what is there what is there a need to present yourself in that fashion if that's not how you're living? Here's one like I don't know if we talk about people. We can talk about anybody, right? Whatever. Like Gordon Ryan, we'll talk about him. You if you only know him from the internet, you think he's a douchebag. Right. Fucking douchebag. Mm -hmm. And I mean I never hung out with him personally as a friend or whatever, but training with him. Like, if you don't know him, you think he's a fucking douchebag. But when you train with him, like, I've been to the city and trained. He is the most, like, he's like, hey, you want to roll? I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, he's going to try to kill me. Mm -hmm. But he was, like, the most professional. Like, so professional. Like, maybe he could have smashed me. Whatever. Anyway, 
Well, he's, he was, he's super, yeah. fat, he's super he's nice. Like, best, he, he's he's a, one of the best in the world. In, in real life, he's not that fucking dude who's on the internet. Like he is definitely a different person. I and tell like, people that all the time. When do, I, you, like, do I not tell people that all the time? Yeah. Like when I was in Texas, trained with those 10th Planet guys in San Antonio, like, like, no, he's not. He's like, he's definitely a fucking professional. He's a, pro- as far as like being a professional in this sport, he's 100% professional. But, oh shit. Careful. The mic picks, the mics are good. Well, They're I know it mic. sound good. I'm thinking about, I have to make some beats and start flowing. You could, we could do like clips, you know, clips. <laughs> fucking, this sounds like a drone. Look at mm-hmm. tribal ceremony going. Like it. Yeah, I, I talk about that all the time, man. Like, you know, and uh, I unfollow a lot of people I like, you know, like just because I just. It, mastering social media is really something that is yet to be done. You Unfollowing know? has become therapeutic to me. Yep. Every time I unfollow someone, I'm like, this is good for me. Yeah. This is good yeah. for me. Because it's weird because you you have a feeling that you like you're gonna hurt their feelings or like there's sometimes where there's like people I know and I'm like, well, I don't wanna like it'll be weird if they realize that I'm not following their shit, but I don't really care about like what you're shoveling down your social media yeah. every fucking day. Yeah. And like, then when I do it, it's always the correct decision. Like I was like, mm-hmm. man, I really don't like waking up seeing the shit you post that I don't like and it bothers me. Yeah, I'm about to unfollow Murphy. Governor Murphy, like, keep your, wait, you keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Mm-hmm. So that's the only reason why I started following Murphy. But, like, I'm getting tired of looking at his fucking face. But that's it. that's disinformation. It's almost like uh, when, when someone's, like, kind of, like, an enemy of yours and you're, like, a you're a good person and they're, like, your enemy, like, their, their social media is almost like a, a troll or it's, like, a, it's inverted. You know what I mean? It's, like, what they want to say. But it's it's an agenda. You know what I mean? It's like a mind fuck. It's getting if I'm a good person, why do I always post negative stuff on his comments? I mean his posts. Right, but that's be- Because I'm a good person and you you're see a through scumbag. the bullshit. You see yeah. through the bullshit. You're like, this is clearly bullshit. Malarkey. Uh huh. Malarkey. I like Malarkey. You know? Uh it frust- it's frustrating. So like, you know, uh Yeah, that's huge. I'm so glad you brought that up because I talk about that all the time. Um Cause like on my social media, I, I post, you know, I've been posting, even sometimes I'll post a picture of Benjamin up and I'll like take it down. You know what I mean? Benjamin. Buttons. My baby. Yeah. Benjamin Button. <laughs> um, he's like this big, but I'll take him down just cause I'm like, man, like I don't want people on the internet oh, knowing about him. Speaking too. of your baby, uh, your baby's cute as hell, but <laughs> if you're going to put your baby in a video the other day when you're like teaching him how to block punch, yeah. brush his hair first, at least. No, like, dude. Come on, man. His hair was all fucked. His hair, n- dude. His hair was, no, up. no, I was I like, will- I was like, it was like a little baby mullet. Dude, you don't even, you have a mullet. I know. <laughs> dude, you, <laughs> you can't give a baby a million mullet. dollar mullet. <laughs> Call me Ted DiBiase, dude. Um, he, he, uh, you will comb his hair. Like if you don't put product in his hair, his hair will actually, it does that. My hair does that. It goes right up. You know, he's, uh, he's awesome. I spend every morning with him, but, uh, <clears throat> and then I'll, at night and I see him and stuff, but we pass him off to the grandparents and shit. It's not so bad. Everyone, you know, everyone make, you know. Whatever. I don't have a baby, so I don't know. It's all good. Uh-huh. It's all good. I'll you could still you could still have one though. If I had a baby, that's the cool thing about being a guy. If I had a baby, I'd probably throw it up in the air and try to drop kick it before it landed. <laughs> Stop it! I just like drop kick it. What a great promo! Wanna, Stop it! <laughs> yeah. I wanna, that's an interesting podcast. I'll check this one out. <laughs> I want to drop kick. I like drop kicking, even though I don't get the drop kick ever. I just want to drop kick. He likes to drop kick. It's a good friend to have, you know. Uh, that what's that Henzo Gracie quote? Quote right? He comes out with a flying kick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this guy will come out of left if I'm at the bar getting fucked up or something. And when I was in the Drew's there, yeah, is he gonna be just a? I mean, imagine him coming at you from an angle. You know, gonna be a problem. When I was in the Marines, we fought a lot. I was gonna ask. My dad was like, in uh, the army, and he I, said they would go out, and there was tons of fights. Dude, what's I, the craziest fight you had there? Oh shit! These are I, good stories. Okay, I have stories. On, well. Okay, the biggest one was a big riot right before we went to Japan. I had a broken leg because I had a motorcycle accident, so I'm on crutches. And whenever there was a fight, people would come to get me. Like, hey, Drew, these guys want to fight. I'm like, oh, okay. And this was ever, <laughs> ever <laughs> since. You were that guy. <laughs> ever since whenever. Come help us. So, like, we're getting ready for inspection the next morning because we're going to Japan. So you get to fold all your shit up, everybody on the mattress, like, perfect. Fold your underwear, crease it. Fold your underwear, crease it. Like three, you know, so it's a perfect size. So I'm on my crutches ironing shit. And all of a sudden, 
these guys come in my room like, yo, these guys want to fight outside. I'm like, fuck. So I come out on my crutches. I'm like, on my crutches. And these are two guys drunk as fuck. And we had a catwalk. So it's like, you know, uh, we're on the second story. So mm-hmm. it's uh, whatever. Catwalk around the mm-hmm. outside. So they're talking shit. And I'm like, okay. So I drop my crutches. So I start fighting one bigger guy. And I'm trying to throw him over the fucking rail. Like I wanted him to go over the rail. I was just like, that's crazy. I got to iron my shit. <laughs> yeah. And I got a broken leg, man. What the fuck? So I'm trying to throw him over the fucking cat walk. And then my friend started beating up the other guy. And then uh, whatever, they left. So then, I mean, this is a, we have time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a story. It's a four part fight. And uh, <laughs> so then they leave. They go back to their barracks. They were in the same battalion. It was a different company. So anyway, <laughs> the buildings, there's one building here, rooms all around it, another building. So like a rectangle of buildings, company, 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 all four companies make a battalion. So then, you know, we talk about the fight. Oh, no, it's fun. You know, you talk about the fight, you f- talk about it for a little bit. So here's the catwalk. My room is like right after the middle room. I'm walking back this way. Everybody is inside in their rooms already, and I'm walking from one room to the other. All of a sudden, all these people start filtering in the catwalk, and it was just nonstop heads. Like, they got their whole fucking building to come, and it was just me, and I'm walking with my broken leg. I'm like, fuck, and they're like, where's that tough guy at? Where's that tough guy? I'm like, fuck, and it was just a mob of heads just deep Mm -hmm. coming down the catwalk, and it was just me. I'm like, fuck. Well, you have the advantage because it's narrow. It's a catwalk. My, yeah, One at a time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's like 300, you know? I couldn't make it to my room in time because they were already too close and I couldn't get there. I'm like, fuck. So then I just start unscrewing, unscrewing this broom handle because, like, we we're all clean and getting ready for the inspection. I don't know. I didn't know what else to do. So I just started <laughs> screwing this because I figured it'd give me the longest reach. So when they got closer, they're like, there he is. I'm like, fuck. So I just start popping him in my head with the broom handle. And that doesn't hurt much, you know? It's like, whatever. And. I realized like after half a second, that's not going to work. So I turn and I start running towards the other end of the catwalk with a broken leg. It was just my tibula fibula. So it was a small one. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't the big one. So I'm running and they're all chasing me. And I was going to jump off the second story, like right at the end, right, right before I jumped, they tripped me up and they had me in the middle and they just kicked the shit out of me. The one dude had cowboy boots on and he's like, uh, in the ribs. So I just stayed in a ball because if I would have tried to get up, my face would have been yeah, vulnerable. Been Anything would have been vulnerable. So I just stayed in the ball and took the biggest ass whooping of my life. <laughs> and like cowboy boots in the ribs ain't no fucking joke. No joke. Like <laughs> Yeah, they got those those tips. Oh, man. It, hurt. it was like, fuck. So they just beat the shit out of me. And then like this other platoon came from the other side and my people came out and then like it broke up finally. And I was so pissed off. So they all left. It broke up. I don't know how many minutes later, after everything was like said and done, this one dude is like, so again, there's stairs on each end of the building, stairs in the middle. This dude comes up the middle and he's halfway up the middle. He's talking shit to my whole platoon. Like my whole platoon is standing on the top and this dude is just drunk as fuck. He was jacked. What do guys drink in the military? Because they don't, there's I, not like beers and shit. Are they doing like toilet no, wine or what? No, there's beers. <laughs> I don't Prison. know. I've never been to fucking the yeah. military, you know? When I was in the yeah. military, I used to drink a fifth of Southern Comfort before we went out at night and then still go to the bar and spend like Well, you know what? That's over when I started bucks. training with you guys too. Like, um, I, you know, because alcohol was always a thing. Like you never mix alcohol in like martial arts. But really, like in a fight, like most street fights are going to take place with alcohol. Jackie Chan, don't say that. Right. Or like, but like, or if you were like an old West gunfighter, you probably had some whiskey in you if you were getting in a gunfight, mm. you know? So it's almost like a, if you're, dude, if you're, if your life is on the line, you're probably going to take the edge off a little bit. You want to be good at kind of uh, knowing how to operate with that in your system I mean, a little bit. When you're a Marine, I mean, I guess there was people who didn't drink, but we drank a lot. You yeah, know, we're a Marine, fucking, yeah. yeah. So this guy's standing on the second story, and I just got my ass whooped really bad, so I was really angry, and I wanted redemption on anybody. And this guy wouldn't shut the fuck up. All of a sudden, my friend kicks him down the steps, and there's, you know, steps and brick walls, and I never beat the shit out of somebody so bad in my life. Like, I don't really feel bad about it because I was still angry, but our corpsman was on duty and he was begging us to stop because we were beating the shit out of him so bad. They took pictures of his scalp and his hair in the brick after. Ugh. Like, you see his hair in the brick. 
Yeah, that's why you don't talk shit. You never know who had a bad day, right? It's mm-hmm. not even like you didn't even deserve it. Who him? Well, he was talking maybe shit. He, he maybe shit. he deserved it, but you were in that zone where like I just got my ass whooped by boots, cowboy right, boots. Right. So you were in that zone where uh, you know, you were looking for it. I'll try to I'll try to finish it. So, and so then again, that happened, and then all of a sudden their whole company came over and our whole company, well, my whole platoon, two platoons, dragons and machine gunners. They filled up the catwalk with people, weapons, all kinds of shit, and beat the shit out of each other. People were pulling people in rooms, like opening their doors, pulling somebody in. So we have these cable locks, you know, which is like the little turn thing lock, like in high school, mm-hmm. but it has a big wire to like go through your gun to fucking keep it. You're right. People were holding that and hitting with the hey, fucking. Dude. So yeah. they it were, sounds like prison. They That's were, why I said toilet <laughs> wine. They were pulling people in the rooms, beating the shit out of them, and then throwing them out. And that happened. Somebody got hit in a fire extinguisher. I think we sent over 20 of them to the hospital. And we had like one person go to the hospital because he got hit with a fire extinguisher. And our inspection was the next morning. And there was blood over like half the rooms. It was So it was pretty wild. We didn't get in trouble. Our lieutenant was pretty impressed with the fact that we sent like over 20 of them to the hospital and only one of them went to the hospital. Yeah. So that was a good fight. I have a lot more like fighting stories. What uh? What made you like trying to go the military route? Was that like an op, like only option type of thing, or college wasn't really a thing? Or I, the only year I went to one school for a whole year, I think, was my senior year. So other, I like went to four schools in a year, three schools in a year. Like I never had a permanent home. I lived here, I lived there. So yeah, school. Like I never learned anything in school because you know, moving all the time is just like you're trying to you know, accumulate the new place. And I didn't learn shit. Yeah. You have other shit to worry about. I didn't learn shit in school. So yeah, there was no other choice. And as far as the military, there was no other choice besides the Marines because that fucking uniform and just the Marine, whatever. So yeah. If you're going to be in the military, be a Marine, right? It's kind of like the idea. No, not if no, no, no. (laughs) It depends how you want to live your life. If you want to be, take it easy or if you want to fucking work hard. Yeah. You could join the Air Force. You could, Do it for real. The Marines, like, we took over Haiti. We took over Haiti. We were there living under fucking whatever. And then the Army came and took over. And they set up tents with fucking coolers and air conditioner and fucking stores. And we're like, you know, the Marines and the Army are two different fucking people, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my one blue belt's a Marine. And he, like, gained mad weight. His name's Christian. But then again. He's a beast. Go ahead. There are... There's a, I mean, there's a, O three, and then there's everything else. What's O three? Infantry. There's a lot of people who don't do shit in the Marines. So just because you say you're Marine, you yeah, could be, you could be a pencil pusher. You which, could be a you could be a black belt in jujitsu. You could be a cook. You which could be is a cool. pencil pusher. Bitches you are hungry. Be a cook. Bitches are hungry, but you know, there's as far as the Marines, like Marines can talk <laughs> shit about anybody. But but there's a total the infantry, of yeah, right. I mean, they're still, you know, hierarchy cool Marines of Marines. Me, yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing with jujitsu, too. You know, like there's black belts that cook and there's black belts that go crush, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool, man. So, Drew's an American patriot, a fucking jujitsu black belt, business owner, all kinds of shit. What else have we done? You know, I don't know. Is what? A, what a, is there anything you're trying to promote? Is there anything you're trying to do? Like, uh, anything else you want to talk about? I make the sickest shirts in the world. I got mad skills if you need shirts. This, um, is, this is Mike's game. If you need also. to learn how to pass a guard when someone's sitting on their butt, I can help you with that because I got mad skills. So anti-leg lock game. Um, eventually, I'll probably put out like a love making with your girl jujitsu because I got mad skills, butterfly style. Yeah, it's, Drew- it's a new thing, you know, and people don't talk about it, but butterfly to X-guard. Talk about it with your girl. Yeah, hit it from underneath. Mm. The X guard. X guard. X guard makes them light. And then the, if you're under them, their hips are light. You can do whatever you want. Mike, you know you don't know X guard. I no. Uh, See, Mike just started kickboxing. I did. Sweet. Which is awesome. For which the, is awesome for the girls That's or a, for you? Uh for me. Okay. It's a, it'll, Wait. it'll turn into for the girls. It'll turn into that <laughs> if you get good, you start you stick with it. It'll be like okay, yeah, I can yeah. I can get good enough at this. No, for them in class, just hanging out. Yeah. It's like going to a bar without having to buy a drink. Yeah, they have um, 
X guard is dope for that. You elevate, get underneath, and then you can. I like to, you know, sometimes I'll put a lockdown in. I'll switch that X guard to a lockdown. Mm, I haven't tried that. You can lock drag. So you got the lockdown and you drag the leg over the head. So you got like a like a gable grip over their hip with a lockdown in. Yeah, I, Somebody needs to be the first to get it on BJJ Fanatics. Like a sex. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because it's mad. I mean, if you're not using, if you're not, if you're doing jujitsu and you're not taking it home oh, and using it. There's no choice. Yeah. I mean. Once you do jujitsu, right? There's no, there's, you I mean, got eyes for that. I mean, that. I hope you're doing it with your girl. <clears throat> what would you guys do? Put out like a book or a show, or would you do like a, a book? Would be a good idea. Like a sit down. I mean, like maybe we could both do it in spandex. Uh, like either that, or we get you have to get boy, boy girl, or boy boy with spandex, skin, skin colored tights. Yeah, <laughs> not, you know the Kama not, Sutra Jiu Jitsu style. You know, whatever. I'm not sure how it's going to work out yet. Got to think about that. You know, everyone that does Jiu Jitsu knows that it's not something really commonly talked about. I mean, I got a son out of it, so yeah, <laughs> I can't miss. You know what I mean? Um, you can give like weekly, uh, hey man. weekly tips and like a robe, even a leg drag. Yeah, even like a people don't even know about leg drags. I learned something new, but I can't share it anyway. I'll tell you. Drew guys. tells I'll you. Tell you guys, Drew I'll, tells I'll tell you, you guys, wild shit. Like, I'm gonna like tell I was it. doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm saying, doing this to, that. You need you to know. turn that into like a weekly. Instagram I came up clip. with secret shit last night, and I'll tell them after. I'm gonna tell them after it's a secret shit. You no, know, you guys ain't ready for it. Hey yet. man, God bless you, bro. You you deserve it. You know, we all do. I hope everyone's out there using their jujitsu for good. You know, jujitsu saves. I mean, it's th- corny to say that, but it does. But yeah. then uh, you train with Arsini, and you realize jujitsu is just a fun sport. Yeah, defend, it's a game. Defend yourself. Like he's been taking me into that realm of like, yeah, it was fun. I was lazy. You know. Yeah, I, you're in a fight. Even like Daniel Grace, he's my instructor, and he's like, I'll sweep people, but I won't get on top. Like eventually, you know. You become good and you get lazy, mm-hmm. which is a bad thing. You have to you have to get out there and challenge. You you can't if you're a person out there who's just wrong with people you can beat. You're a fucking scum. Yeah, you're scum. in your you're, scum. you're in your little like, bubble. You have a problem. Get out there and get your ass whooped. Science. Have fun. Science. That's how we grow, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Um, I think you can do all. I think a book would be cool, like a book on on the the sexual positions that you could use jujitsu kama sutra yeah i mean that's a great idea mm. you know even choke holds like you can choke there's degrees of choke i can you know? ca- i can cartwheel pass right in the doggy style no wait. i can't i just made that up sorry <laughs> 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 i was like wait i was like hold on it sounded cool <laughs> hold on no that's awesome man we talk about this all the time you know like um huge huge it's just it it it, it, it uh, bleeds through to every other aspect of your life. You know, once you get like to a certain level of competence, you know, even, you know, martial arts has a, you know, it's Here, it's so old. That martial we, arts is so old. One of the reasons why like, I never really accomplished anything. I've competed a lot and beat a lot of good dudes before the interweb. Like I've smashed really good dudes. Um, but I have so many hobbies. Like jiu is great, but and I love it, but it's just another hobby. Right. Except you're good enough at it to make a living. It's not a hobby. You're a professional. No, I am not making a living. I'm paying to teach jujitsu for the last year. Well, uh, yeah. I haven't. You'll be back though. I think like uh, Murphy owes me money. All these, all these funds. Who's got them? Your soccer team got them, Murphy. I ain't get shit. Anyway, he owns sorry. a soccer team. Yeah, and he's got like he got a bunch of fucking PPP money. I ain't getting nothing. This motherfucker billionaire is getting fucking money. Anyway. Back to yeah, back it's to shitty. Training. Back to training. It's shitty. Um, pass the guard. Learn to pass the guard. Pass your guard. Yeah, I don't know. Don't get butterfly swept. Don't Mike, s- what time are we at? We're at about fifty-five. So you got about fifty minutes. We're good. Yeah, We're good. good. The forty-five. Oh, I got to pee off. so You want to pee? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Can wrap I pee it up. and then sing a song? Yeah. yeah. Let's pee. Me and Michael chop it up. Go pee. And uh, we'll we'll wrap up. You want to do that? Cool. I'll be back. All right. One minute. Yeah. So Drew, I've been training with Drew for like a couple months. Uh, his passing's really good. Anti leg lock game. You know, you want to, you know, give your girl an orgasm. He's, you know, he can learn I think, how to do I that. I think you guys should be doing uh, uh, like minute long Instagram tips. Listen, man. <laughs> <for> sex. <laughs> everyone in jujitsu, bro. I know some savage. You know, there's it's just is what it is. You know. Yeah. People don't aren't onto it yet. People still aren't onto it. You know, like it's a, it's a whole lifestyle. Like it just makes your whole life better. You know, you're more flexible, you're stronger, you're, 
you're more aware of like the, what the body is capable of, what you can do to bodies, you know, it, it crosses all aspects. It's like really like a whole like kind of thing, you know? Uh, so it's, it's good to train, you know, how's kickboxing going? Uh, I'm falling in love with it. Uh, I think, I mean, I go every Wednesday now. I'm not trying to do too much. Uh, like I said to a artist, I was like, man, uh, it's not so much what I'm doing in here. It's the changes I have to make outside of here to get here every week. Cause mm-hmm. like, I'm super out of shape and he has been pushing the shit out of me. He's like, this isn't, he's like, this is sped up to what we normally do. Cause he knows I want to lose weight. And, um, it was embarrassing like where I'm at, but like when I'm driving home, I'm like, you got to stop doing this shit. Like, like I picture getting through everything and making it and it, it the whole thing's awesome. I, I, like, it's just a rabbit hole. I love figuring out, um, how to maintain cardio now. And like how, like the first day I went, like I blew my arms out. Cause I'm just like, Ugh! and he's like, okay, this is how you punch. And then when I started punching correctly, I'm like, Oh, like, you can like when I punch you correctly, I'm not I'm not using everything and being exhausted. Like and yeah. then by the second one, he's like, You're not breathing. And then I was like, All right, so then I'm now I'm breathing on the punches and then now I can like go a little bit longer and I'm like really understanding like what it takes to do that. And I'm like, This is fucking nuts. Yeah. But I, I'm obsessed with it. Like I you know, I ordered gloves and it all I think about is that Wednesday class now. Like it's over and I'm like, all right, all right. All right, you know, like my cardio is bad. So it takes 25 minutes for me to be able to breathe with my asthma. So I said to him, I'm like, I need to get up earlier, go for a hike or a walk, get my cardio going. So when I come in here, I can perform better because I'm able to breathe right away. And it's not me getting to breathe. And then the the end of the class is when I, I can actually function. That's too much work. It's, uh, that's the end of the class. There's like an awesome Jean Jacques quote where he's like, you know, the end of the class is when the real training begins. Yeah. Because that's like when your <laughs> your mind is clear and you're all right. And, uh, you know, you feel good. You know, you, oh. d- you put yourself through hell, you know, but at the end, on the other side of it, you know, you feel that's heaven right there. Yeah. I get a lot of anger out. Like, uh, yeah. I just have so much shit ended this year horribly. So, like, you know, I was driving home on Wednesday and I'm like just totally at peace. Like, when Huge. somebody cut me off, I was like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, normally, really. I'm like, exactly. I'm like, I'll fucking kill you, and I'm speeding yeah. up and trying to cut them off. Yeah, so, my girl does that, and I'm like, you know, you're gonna really get the road rage really upsets me because I'm like, people are nuts. I yeah. know people that have gone to jail, killing people off road rage. I know, you know, mm. I know world champion black belt guys that have died getting in a road like they think they're yeah. a black belt world champ. That don't mean shit. That I, doesn't mean shit here. I punched someone in the face one time in road rage. Yeah, I, it's I, not I walked a good, up to his car and he rolled his window down and started talking shit to me. I was just gonna talk shit to him. But then he started talking shit, and I was like, mm, "You deserve these knuckle sandwiches." <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, it was a bad day to fucking fuck with me. Anyway, you yeah. know, you never know. Like you said, you never know what yeah. that dude had. Right? How that day's dude went. Apparently, I didn't have a good day. Or <laughs> you know, like if you get set off and lose total fucking control, now you're going not to good. fucking court. Not good. You know, some assholes like sues people all the time. You're going to jail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I going don't want to jail. fucking go to jail. I tell my girl all the time, like, you know, she she'll get she'll cut pe- like someone will get she'll cut her off she'll freak out i'm like why why do you, what does it matter we're yeah. right here we're right here as far as punching all you need to learn is the jeet kundo jab i went to a muay thai school one time and i had to apologize to the instructor because every single person i sparred with had a bloody nose <laughs> and i was just throwing a jeet kundo jab because they stand here like this yeah and i'm just like hey. Yeah. Muay Thai people, you know, Definitely. everyone has their style that everyone like, you know, they come in their pants about. Um, and mm. every every one of them has a hole. You know, Muay Thai, if you're just a straight Muay Thai guy, you're easy to beat. If you're a straight boxer, you're easy to beat. If you're a straight kickboxer, you're easy to beat. If you're a straight jiu-jitsu guy, you're easy to beat. Hey, but guy, easy to jiu-jitsu, beat. I know. I know like jiu-jitsu as far as like a hierarchy of martial arts. That's not jiu-jitsu. If you had to know like one... You would if you only knew one, you would pick jujitsu because the striking is not going to matter. You're going to grab them, drag them to the mat, or drag them to the, the concrete, or slam them to the concrete. You don't even get to do jujitsu. Oh. You know, can uh, I tell you a story? <clears throat> Go ahead. I have stories because you said slamming on concrete one time in band camp. <laughs> Actually, it was before band camp. It was in high school. Oh, there was this guy I hated so much, and we just like, I was like, "Come outside right now." We went outside, <clears throat> and we fought. <clears throat> in the in the parking lot and i let him put me in the headlock and i grabbed him and i suplexed him yeah 
right in the concrete. Yeah, the body lock is is probably like like if you got in a fight, like when I train my guys, right? Most of them don't compete. Most of them will I train guys for like if they got in a fight at a gas station or something like that. That's what I think about. I see like fights where the guys throwing punches. Every fight you see throwing starts throwing punches. Watch a boxing match. You watch Floyd Mayweather versus whoever you want or Canelo. They throw a couple punches and what do they end? They end up in a clinch. They end up in a upper body tie most of the time, you know, because they don't want to get hit. That's gonna that's slamming territory. Like you run into a wrestler or a guy that wrestled in high school, he's gonna body lock you, pick you up, and slam you on the concrete. So that's like one of the main things I teach my guys. It's like I don't want to see any one of my students get like body locked, slammed on concrete. That's like one of the first things I teach people. I want that mastered. You know what I mean? I don't want you saying you train with me and get fucking your head broken on concrete. That'd be fucked up. Um, so yeah, punching, punching and kicking is good. It's part of it. You know, grappling is part of it. You know, I don't know. It's all the more you know, the less you use, right? Yeah, like I said, I can't get in a fight. I want to. It's enjoyable. No, like I wish I could walk outside right now and there was like three dudes outside like wanting to fight me. That would be great. But there's nobody like that. Because the Biden people don't want to fight you. No. No. They were not. They're in their house with their masks on. Wait. I'm sorry. My bad. You're allowed here. Trust me. We've that. done. We've done all this. Yeah. We have. We disinfect the studio. Uh, I got flagged for. <laughs> I got flagged for hate speech. I'm like our one sorry. of our first. Uh, I know there's people who train jujitsu who do that, but even your posts are weird. What do you mean? Like vote for Biden? No, I'm over it. Training. Let's go out. Let's move this shit outside on the parking lot and challenge people. I'm have, just kidding. I have to I'm pick sorry. Pick up a small table from a marketplace to slam somebody into. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't go fight people in the parking lot. Guys. Hey man, <laughs> fighting is like a huge thing that like is just got eliminated from life, but it's still like a major part of it. You know, it's uh, it's good to know how to fight. It's a good time to know how to fight because no one can fuck with you. One of my very first fights, I always grew up where I was because of my skin complexion different than everybody else. Because you're white? Yeah. We were the poorest people there. One of my first fights, it was in second grade. And I thought I was friends with all my students. Friends, team, what do you call them? What do you call them? People, classmates. And one day I went outside and I got my ass whooped by every single person in the school. Everybody walking by the school. Again, I was the only person. And it was like every time I tried to stand up, I get drop kicked in the spine. I like I'll never forget it. I felt like I was drowning. Like I just couldn't stand up. Cause you, I stand up, drop kick in the spine, drop, but, but punch me, punch me, punch me, and it went on for over ten minutes. Like just, I mean, it was hundreds of people. I mean, not hundreds of people, but there was a dozen. No, there was at least a hundred. Really, at least a hundred people, and everybody. Stick you know, turn. Hey, look, lean yeah, lean let's in. hit this pinata. Beat the white kid up. Yeah. So finally, some. There was another black guy. He came. He was like in high school or something. He came and fucking saved me. Thank God. But it just went on for. Because there's a hundred people. They all want their fucking lick, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I was completely surrounded by at least 20 deep in a 90 fucking whatever. So I grew up getting my ass fucking. Whooped. Old school dodgeball. Do you remember old school dodgeball? <laughs> if you Do you remember old wrench. school dodgeball? They had. There's the dodgeball that is illegal now. Like dodgeball is totally illegal in school. But That's they so put it, crazy. yeah. They put it in. <laughs> That's they, the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're letting some some what? school is letting a kid get beat up by you know a hundred people. Yeah, you know that's how school was. You know, it's it's you know, but they they when I used to play dodgeball when I was a kid, it was two kids in the middle of a circle. There was like a chalk circle, and then everyone was around the circle trying to get in. So if you hit a guy with a dodgeball, you would be in the circle, and then you would be the guy dodging the balls. So you'd be in the circle and there'd be like a whole class of kids around the outside of the circle trying to peg you with a ball. And it could be from any direction. That sounds super fun. It's It was awesome. I mean, I remember is, that it game. Does, it sounds way funner than my experience I was talking about. But Yeah, that's way better. Sounds like a kid's game. Yeah. Um, but like while you're talking about that, it's uh, they're trying to raise weak people to be easier to take in over. Yeah. They are made a virus. To kill the old people because they remember history and they're erasing the past. Tearing down statues. Erase the history, kill the old people, nobody remembers. Start over now. Now you're all fucking sheep. Don't be a sheep, train jujitsu, have friends. Nobody's racist in real life. Damn. 
I think we should end it there. I wish he would have went into his song right after. Oh, that was beautiful. Song now? That was beautifully sung. Do, yeah. do we have music? Yeah. Um, well, well put. A friend of mine named Steve Goodman wrote this song, and he told me it was the perfect country and western song. I wrote him back a letter, and I told him it was not the perfect country and western song because he hadn't said anything at all about mamas or trains. <laughs> or trucks. We gotta get the fuck out of here, dude. This, <laughs> is, getting, this is getting weird. <laughs> or getting Drew's drunk. getting on a thing. He's getting well, on a tangent. It's time to wrap it up. Well, I'm no. wrapping it up. I no, no, sat down and wrote a verse of the song, and he sent it to me. And after reading it, I realized that my friend had written the perfect country and western song, and I felt to oblige including it on this album. The last verse goes like this: Here, well, I was drunk the day my mom got out of prison. <laughs> And I went to pick her up in the rain. But before I could get to the station in my pickup truck, she got run over by a damned old train. I leave it there. And I'll hang <laughs> around as long as you will let me. And I never minded standing in the rain. <laughs> what a perfect way to end the show. Awesome. You don't have to call me darling. Darling. You never even call me by my name. Hey, it was pretty fun. Right? That wasn't Hi. bad, right? Hi. That's your first podcast. There's still so much more to talk about. Yeah, man. We can have you back. I mean, uh, I'm going to see you again. We can, we, I mean, it's Saturday at 10 o'clock. I'm not going to do shit the rest of the day. There's fights on today at 3 o'clock. 3, three o'clock. We can talk about my first sexual experience with a 60-year-old man when I was five. Yikes. You know, I mean, right. there's much to talk about. Fuck that, dude. Fuck scared. that guy. Um, uh, again? No. It was, <laughs> why no. again? No. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> no. I didn't like it then. I'm not going to like it this time. No. Fuck that, man. That sucks. You didn't have nobody to hang out or just to be there for you, man. That he, sucks. He was Sorry. there. He was there for me. Fuck that guy. No. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> fuck that guy. But uh, I think, uh, you know, I've been training with Drew for a couple months now and like uh, styles are dope. You know, like uh, styles make shit go down. You know, I think, you know, American Patriot Marine. Fucking business owner, fuck the government. They're fucking us out of our money. Um, yes. Anything you want to plug or anything you want to uh, say? Yeah, what's yes. your social media? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I mean, to me, I just feel like um, life as we knew it is over, pretty much. Like people say, oh, when this is over, when the mass end, it's. I don't think it's really going to come to an end. It's going to get really, really worse, and I just keep thinking about like. Maybe we got to wear fucking stars on our shoulder. You know, you can't go to like sporting events. Like these poor kids growing up now, like it's not going to end. Like, I don't know who thinks it's going to fucking end. Bill Gates is going to keep creating viruses. And uh, like try to get out. Try not to watch TV. Try to get out. Try to hang out with your fucking friends. Get out there. Tell your moms to shut the fuck up. Tell your dads to shut the fuck up. Say, I'm going to hang out with my fucking friends. We're going to go catch We're going to go catch fucking the flu from each other and fucking build our immunity rather than sit home and fucking be weak. If you sit in the fucking house and be weak when you come out, you're going to be fucking sick. Yeah, duh. Get out, share, fucking make out with everybody you can make out with. Spank your mom on the ass. Enjoy fucking life before you die, bitches. Wolves only. Sheep's blood. Beautiful. Uh, I want to thank Mike for having us. I want to thank Drew for coming on. Man, he drove from a while away to come here. Stayed in Bethlehem last night. Uh, I don't know. Trainer Don't Podcast. Uh, we have a bunch of sponsors for Now We Go. I got to work on sponsors for this show, I guess. Is that different sponsors or same sponsors? We can start figuring stuff out. Yeah, they whatever. Wanna tag, like, I'll talk to you about it afterwards, but there's ways to move it around. Yeah, man. I think... Um, oh, can I give a shout out? Go ahead. Dude, this is what we're here for. Go ahead. Uh, evil bikes. Even though you don't give me shit. I like your bikes. Your bikes are the best. I got four of them. At Evil Bikes. Evil Bikes. This is a mountain bike? Yeah. Like, uh, so, like the jiu-jitsu community, uh, here's what I love about sports that I do. Like sports. I'm listening. Hold on. Like not soccer, not whatever, like a like a high school sport. Sports that we do, like outside of high school, 
say for mountain biking, you could have, be riding with a fucking amazing mountain biker and you do and you suck and you do something better than what you could have. They cheer. Everybody cheers and supports. I love I love when people are really really good and they watch people who like suck do something a little bit better than they did. You know, you were better than you were when you came. I don't know why I'm burning this up. I thought it was over. Shut me up. Ride bikes is cool. It's another community. I get out and meet a lot of people, drink beers, barbecue. Yeah, mountain biking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something you do. I think that's cool too, man. It's not going to give you a six pack though. You can still be fat because you drink beer after. So mm, you just do it for fun. Get out, get away from people, get in the fucking woods. But cut this shit off. I'm going to keep going. All right, cool. I think oh. uh, I think Drew is like one of the unsung heroes of the East Coast. You know, he's uh East Coast jiu-jitsu guys don't get a lot of hype like the West. I don't know, like West Coast guys are just world famous and East Coast guys are just shit on. Perfect, um, perfect, perfect. I don't first, understand it. Perfect first guest. But yeah, man, Drew's the man. I'm I think old. we're going to have a lot of interesting guys. This is who I train with every, I train with this guy yeah. once a week. If, um, you know, sometimes I don't see him, but uh, I try to see him as much as I can once a week. You know, we meet up and uh, he's got something cool cooking in New Jersey with uh, Arseny Grebnov. Check out Fighting Heel Martial I'm, Arts. I'm not, I'm not an internet red belt like a lot of people. Yeah. Like a lot of people who suck are internet red belts. And there's a lot of people who fucking... I can smash with one fucking hand who have 10 times more students than me. Absolutely. And they pretend they're fucking superheroes. I'm not a superhero, but I'll teach you how to fucking smash somebody. Yeah. Or I'll tell you, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to teach anybody to be a better person in my school. I'm only going to teach you jujitsu. I can't, I'm not a good person. Shut up. I have yes, good, you are. I have good morals, but I'm not going to try to teach you. Uh, yo, yeah, I, but that's, I'm going to lead the shit by example. I'm not going to tell them. I'm not going to fucking speak verbally. Like, uh, right. wa- Watch me learn and be a better person. Treat people with respect. Morals. Fuck your religion. Religions are all cool. Fuck your religion. Fuck your politicians. Two teams. Fuck two teams. Everybody's scared to vote for the third party because they're voting for the two evils. I don't want this guy to win, so I'm not going to vote for who I want to because... I don't want this person to win. Why did we get into here? Good night. Have a good day. Train or don't, right? Train or don't. Train, Train or, don't, or don't. don't. Train or don't. Drew, thank you, Train man. Train or don't. Uh, Mike, anything? If you're just tuning in, neveragainstudio.com, finishesmma.com, all the links to Drew and all the things that we do are listed in everything below the bio. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy the rest of the day. Listen, guys, thank you so much. Drew, thank you. Mike, thank you. That's it, guys. Mike has the sweetest microphone. Done deal. (laughs) Sexy.